again. I hope you enjoyed the first playlist with of the elements and we're practicing them and are beginning to be able to feel a little bit of how your abdominals contract and getting your shoulders down and all of that sort of stuff. Today I'm going to give you two different, actually three exercises. Uh, two different versions of an abdominal exercise and two different versions of uh, exercise to get your shoulder blades down and to start strengthening those back muscles and then one foot exercise. So let's begin. I'm going to give you the easiest version first and a couple of things to remember when you're doing these abdominal exercises. When you're lying on your back you want to remain in what in Pilates we call neutral spine. You will have a slight curve in your low back. Um, your legs are going to be up though, so that's going to change the angle of the curve. But what you don't want to do is press your low back down. The way I like to think of it is this band right across here, excuse me, right across there. Feel that being heavy and allow it to give in to gravity. So you're not going to be lifting your tailbone, you're not going to be engaging your hip flexor muscles overly so. Even though you're going to be moving your legs and your hip flexors are what do that movement, we're going to pretend like it's your stomach muscles that are doing it. And remember, on the inhale, you're going to cinch the pelvic floor, pull up the rectus. On the exhale, the belly button goes back and across. And then one spit second later after that, you're going to start moving your legs, okay? We're going to do five repetitions, alternating one with the right, then the left, and vice versa. So, obviously, I have this box, and you don't necessarily have this box at home. But if you have a low coffee table, and you can lie down in front of it, um, you want to be able to, like I said, have the back side of your tailbone heavy on the floor, so it can't be too high and it can't be too low. Uh, if it's a little bit low, you could um, put some books on top of it, lay them out so that you have a higher flat surface. I also like to begin by allowing my body to settle a little bit. So we're gonna take two really good breaths. On the inhale, filling up the back and the sides of the lungs. On the first exhale, we're going to let our body settle down onto the surface. On the second exhale, we're engaging the transverse abdominals, the belly button back and across. And then after we do that, we'll begin the exercise. What your legs are going to be doing in the exercise is that you're going to be gently bringing one leg towards you until you have a 90 degree angle at the knee and at the hip. In Pilates, we call this tabletop. And you want to, like I said, keep the back side of your tailbone heavy, not because you're pressing it down, you're simply letting gravity take over so that your stomach muscles can do the work and you're not over engaging your hip flexors and thus tilting your pelvis. That is what you don't want, okay? So you take a breath in. And settle. Inhale, and exhale, belly button back and across. Now take a breath in, exhale, belly button back and across, and slide your right heel toward you until you've got that 90 degree angle. Stay still, inhale, Exhale, re-engage the belly button back and across and slide that leg out. You're never picking your heel up off the box or the surface. Again with the left leg. Exhale, belly button back and across and slide that left leg in. And then exhale, belly button back and across and slide it out. So did you notice? Exhale, bring it in, remain still, inhale then exhale when you slide it out. Let's do five in a row of that.
this is three. Inhale, exhale, belly button back and across and slide it out. Now also, point your sternum towards your pubic bone and close your ribs so that you're not lifting your ribs and your waistline. Let's do two more. Would encourage you to start with that perching. Then when it becomes really easy and you're not really feeling your stomach muscles having to work anymore and you're not feeling your ribs moving around or anything, you're ready to go on. So let's take the box away. Then, now you're going to lie down on your back with your knees bent, your feet flat, your toes and your knees in a direct line with the center of your hip socket. So you're making parallel lines out your hip socket, down your legs. So now what you're going to do is you're going to pick one leg up and bring it to tabletop. I think one thing that helps is if you think about sliding your heel towards you on the surface just an inch or so, and then pick your heel up, then the ball of the foot, and then your toe, and bring your leg to 90 degrees. Take a breath in there, start exhaling, re-engage your stomach muscles, and then lead down with your toe. And you're going to put your toe down and the ball down and the heel down. When you do it that way, you're having more luck keeping your abdominals engaged and not pooching. Also, use your fingertips as a tool. Rest your hands on your stomach and just barely press down in on either side of your belly button then you will feel. If your stomach pushes up out into your hands, you'll know you're doing it wrong. Stop and start over. Let's do five in a row here, alternating right and left. Three more. Make sure your low abs flatten back and across and your ribs close. Did you see? I started letting my leg go down while I was still inhaling. Let's do that one again. Yeah, if you catch yourself allowing your legs to move while you're inhaling at this point in your workout, stop and start over again. We're only doing about five repetitions, so it really shouldn't take that long. So there's that. Now, let's move on. We're going to talk about our back muscles. So this one, we're going to be lying down on your stomach. And you might want a couple of tools. 
have a small pillow to put under your forehead because, yes, I'm sorry, you're going to be lying with your face down and your nose is going to be squished down on the surface just a little bit. But I think we're big enough we can handle that. Then you're going to want to put a little pillow underneath your hips and maybe a little bit of your rib cage for just a little bit of support and protecting your back. Now I'm lying with my feet hanging off of this table, but you can lie on the floor with your toes extended. So you're going to lie down. Once you get your forehead down, you're going to place your arms down beside you, palms facing to the ceiling, fingertips reaching toward your feet. When we start to do the movement, you are going to first exhale you're going to pull your pubic bone up. You're going to flatten your belly button back and across and allow your tailbone to reach toward your heels. And you're going to tweeze your glutes a little bit. You're going to maintain that to protect your low back. Then you're going to take another breath in. On your second exhale, you start sliding your fingertips along the table toward your feet. And, more importantly, your shoulder blades in that V. When you've reached as far as you can go, you're going to pulse your arms toward the ceiling three times. So it looks like this. Did you see that? And you want to be feeling primarily all below your shoulder blades and a little bit between your shoulder blades working. All right? So let's do five in a row. Okay, that's one version. The second version, to make it a little bit more challenging, and don't try this version until you've done the first version several times and it really feels like no problem whatsoever. To make it slightly more challenging, we're going to lift our head and shoulders. Here's what we do not want to do. You see that? When I lifted my head and I looked forward, I'm shortening the back of my neck. We're not trying to shorten the back of our neck. That can create a lot of tension. So when you lift your forehead off of the pillow and across the front of your shoulders, you're going to keep your eyes and your nose pointing straight down to the floor. And remember in the Elements video, I talked about that magnet pulling up on the top of your head. Well, imagine the magnet is here now and it's reaching your head that way. Okay? Everything else is the same. Let's try five of those. Okay, excuse me, I have to stop for a moment. I don't think I explained it fully, but maybe you saw that. You're going to take your first breath in. Your first exhale, you flatten your abdominal muscles, you reach your tailbone, and you tweeze your glutes. You maintain that. Your second exhale, you start sliding your arms and your shoulder blades down. Then, when you lift your arms for the first time, you lift your head and shoulders. And then you only pulse your arms twice more. And on the inhale, you lower everything down. Okay, now let's do five.
so the final thing I want to say about that is don't expect that you're going to be able to get your abdominals contracted and your tailbone reaching in your glutes tweezed and they're going to stay that way through all five repetitions. It's a really good idea to re-engage those muscles at the beginning of every single repetition. That way you make sure you're protecting your back, you're doing that particular repetition as correctly as you possibly can, and you're building better muscle pathways. You're telling your body the correct way to move so that the next time you do it, it's going to be a little bit easier for you to do it. So there's that. And the final one is the foot exercise. Now I'm going to do it sitting up here. I don't recommend that you do that and put your leg all up here like this. You can sit in a chair and put your feet flat on the floor when you're doing this. But you can't see me if I do that. So first I'm going to turn this way. Imagine that you have a piece of paper on the floor beneath your feet. And just like when you're going to take your hand and you're going to scrunch it here, let me move that. You're going to, ooh, you can see it better here. You're going to scrunch it up and wad up that piece of paper. You're doing the same thing with your foot. We're trying to strengthen here the arch of our foot, these muscles along the front, the top of our foot, and we're strengthening the inner and the outer thigh of our ankles. So you take a breath. And as you exhale, think of scrunching with your toes and pulling up from underneath your arch there. Pull it up. Now you lift the ball of your foot and toes, and then you're going to splay your toes, keep your toes splayed, and press the ball of the foot down and then the toes. So you're going to scrunch, pull the arch up. You're going to scrunch your toes, pull them up, spread your toes, and press the ball and then the toes down. Let me turn front, because here's another thing. We don't want to turn our ankle in or out. Most of us are gonna turn the ankle out like that. If you do that, you're telling this side it needs to get tighter and tighter and tighter, and this side gets more and more and more stretched out. You got an imbalance. We want it even and equal. So watch your foot. Think of a point under the big toe at the ball of your foot and a point under the big toe at the ball of your foot. And when those points come up, they come up evenly at the same time. Not one and then the other. Same thing going down. They go down evenly. So you're working the sides of your ankles evenly. So let's do five in a row here. And scrunch and pull it up. Splay the toes and press it down. Scrunch and pull it up. Splay the toes and press it down. Scrunch and pull it up. Splay the toes and press it down. Scrunch and pull it up. Splay the toes and press it down. Once more. Scrunch and pull it up. Splay the toes and really press down. And for now, there are a bunch of other feet things, but just shake your feet out. Don't be surprised if your ankles, or excuse me, your arches and your toes begin to cramp a little bit in the beginning. Our muscles do that when we ask them to work in ways that they're not used to working. But that's okay. When you splay your toes and you press them down, that little cramping will ease out. And the more you do this, the less your feet will cramp. The stronger they will get, the stronger your ankles will get, and it's just going to be helpful all the way around. I hope that these few exercises have been helpful today. We're going to, each week we're going to add on a little more and a little more and a little more. We're going to do some new exercises. We're also, sometimes we're going to do more advanced versions of some of the exercises that we've already done. And over many weeks, we're going to create a whole program. Stick with me. Come back next week. And in the comments, let me know how you like these or if you've got any questions that I can answer for you. Enjoy. Thanks. Bye.